Anyway, uh, I want to talk about this because this this popped up earlier this week, and there's been so many things, crazy things that have happened this week, and I I, I think this is some something that is important to address and talk about. Um, so Joe Biden has signed an executive order to essentially uh, cut, or or rather, the Justice Department will no longer renew its contract with private private prison. Um, uh, operators. So, so they're basically not going to uh, contracts with private prisons. That is what the executive order says. Now, there are some details and some specifics that we need to pay attention to because when you read a headline like this and when you read, you know, just sort of the basics of what's being covered here, it kind of seems like, oh my God, is Joe Biden getting rid of private prisons? Are we done with, with, with the prison industrial complex and mass incarceration? Hooray! And people will kind of look at that. They'll take a you know a 30 second look at the article. They won't really look into the deeps of it. And it creates this illusion that someone like Joe Biden and the Democrats are, are erasing private prisons. And that is not really what's happening here. Uh, it's, it, it's partly what's happening here, but it's not exactly what's happening here. It also erases the fact that the reason why this is happening is not because Joe Biden has come to some revelation that, uh, you know, oh, private prisons are evil and notorious and my goodness. How no, Joe Biden is, is responsible for private prisons. He's profited for private prisons. He's written bills that help private prison in the mass incarceration program. And none of those things are particularly addressed. So um, it's, it's specifically the Justice Department that is going to no longer renew their contracts with private prisons. So let's look at this article here. So here it says, under new policies, the Justice Department will not renew contracts with private prison operators. Advocates have said private, uh, privately operated prisons have contributed to an increase in incarceration rates and treated inmates poorly. Now, it's important to note that it says advocates say not Private prisons do increase uh, incarceration rates, and they do treat inmates poorly. It's just advocates say that, but we don't want to. We don't want to piss off the private prisons by saying exactly what they do. We'll just say there's some people saying some things. We're not really going to say whether it's true or not, but there's some people that are saying. It. So. Here, this is something that Susan Rice says later in the article. They talk about all the other stuff. So, you know, he, he talks about how mass incarceration has uh, put significant costs in societies and communities of color. Uh, you know, they're profiteering off of these people. So here's here's something that uh, Susan Rice clear, clarifies. Domestic policy advisor Susan Rice spoke at a press briefing Tuesday afternoon and confirmed that Biden's order applies to only private prisons run by the Justice Department, not other federal prisons. Not by f other federal agencies. So the private prison program is still going to be around. It's just the Justice Department is not going to use them. They're not, they haven't done anything with this executive order. They haven't done anything to get rid of private prisons, to get rid of people profiteering from from prison labor. They, they haven't done anything to, to really equalize that end of criminal justice, right? And, and we know how bad private prisons are. We know that prison labor is basically slave labor. And we know that prisoners often get used as, you know, this throwaway commodity where they'll go fight fires in California for a dollar an hour or they'll, or they'll replace sanitation workers in New Orleans which we've seen happen from time and time again, and they get paid little to nothing, you know? And we know that's going to happen. So the Justice Department is basically not going to use them. But other federal agencies can. Right? So, so other federal agencies are still going to capitalize on the private prison system. Now, you can say, okay, well, he can't do that with an executive order, and that might be true, but you can say that he can come out and say, well, we're also making plans so that these other federal agencies can't, also can't use private prisons that profit. 
You have an audio problem. Oh my goodness. So the audio problem is back. Okay. So there, there was this audio problem earlier this week. Let me switch the audio. So there is an audio issue that I'm facing here. I apologize for that. I've switched over to, to just my headphone mic. Um, thank you for letting me know in the comment section there. Um, uh, so I've, I've switched over. I hope the audio sounds a little bit better now. I'm not sure what's going on. I think something is going on with the board uh, that I'm using. Uh, I apologize for that. Um, but it, it is it is saying you know uh, that other other prison organizations, uh, rather other federal agencies, can use private prisons. It hasn't gotten rid of private prisons in and of itself. So the the headlines and the articles kind of make it sound like it's better than what it really is. So what's not mentioned in this article, something that I, I touched on a little earlier, is that Joe Biden is part of the art, is one of the architects of private prisons and mass incarceration. His 94 crime bill, his war on drugs, all contributed to that. And nowhere in this article and nowhere in the speech that we'll watch in just a few minutes does he address that. He doesn't talk about the fact that, hey, I wrote a bill that I'm particularly proud of that contributed to this. And I want to undo that bill because I am no longer proud of it. But what does he do is he constantly talks about how proud he is of his uh, legislative efforts. So it make it, it it's not giving you the whole story here. If Joe Biden really wants to be this great healer and this big uniter, then he needs to admit that he has been part of the problem. Those are those are those are key things, especially if you want to say that you're apologizing to communities of color. You're 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 lending them an olive branch to communities of color. What he does do when you bring up the fact that things like the crime bill, his war on drugs, the the massive support to police that he's shown, the leniency he has taken on killer cops. All of that, when you bring that up with Joe Biden, he does what he did to the civil rights leaders. He yells at them. He opens his retort with, I got to go. Why? Because I don't want to take responsibility for any of this shit. Yeah, I you know, like you can't you can't make the argument when when people talk about like slavery and stuff and they're like, oh, well, that was generations ago. It's my ancestors. Why do I have to apologize for something my ancestors did? Blah, blah, blah. You guys have heard that excuse before. Um, Biden can't use that excuse. He can't say like, oh, well, you know, I was part of Congress and uh, and 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 some people were saying some nasty things and I just wanted to kind of hold my place. And con even that would not be an acceptable excuse. But. He doesn't even have the benefit of that because he is the architect of the crime bill. He is the architect uh, or one of the architects of the war on drugs. He was supporting Nixon back in the day. He supported Reagan. He wanted cops to be more funded. He was fine with that. And another thing this article doesn't mention like because like I said it's it it this this article is uh, seems to be an NBC affiliate is the activists on the ground fighting for prison reform fighting for better rights for prisoners uh there was a prison strike about 2 years ago maybe 3 years ago asking for better conditions asking for better treatment guess how many corporate media outlets covered any of that I'll give you almost none almost none it was the same amount of corporate media organizations that covered Julian Assange and even if they do they don't they you know they don't really give you the objective facts they kind of paint it like 
like this is a bad thing or what's going on is so crazy. Like how could these people ask for, these are prisoners for fuck's sake. It's the same thing they did with, with the, um, the Indian farmers that are striking in India right now. When does CNN decide to cover it? When the police engage in violence and the strikers decide to retaliate because how much what do you, what do you expect them to do when they're being fired upon with uh you know explosives and tear gas chemical weapons so it's important to know the whole story and it's important to 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 hold Joe Biden's feet to the fire here and say hey this is great this is a this is a step, right? I mean, fans of incrementalism have to be excited at this point. At this point, what we really need is to just get rid of all for-profit prisons. We should change the structure of of what prisons mean. Period, right? It should be more about um, it should be more about uh, rehabilitation than it should be about punishment. Being in prison is the punishment. That's the punishment. They're already at the punishment. They should be rehabilitated to come back into society. So it should be like, let's get rid of that. That's where we should be at this point. But how are we going to get there when, when the architect of this mass incarceration problem can't even admit that he is responsible for it? And okay... I'll take responsibility and and now I'm going to put executive orders and you know get legislation passed to undo this stuff because I see how detrimental it has been to communities of color. I know some people are going to be like, "Well, Chris, aren't you nitpicking? Like isn't this a good thing?" Y yes. In comparison to having private prisons and having less private prisons is a it relatively is a good thing, good thing. And I know liberals and, and you know the blue MAGA folks are gonna come out and be like, oh, you can't have anything good, blah, 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 blah. You know, oh, this is a good thing. This guy kind of. But we need to go beyond just these breadcrumbs that they're gonna give us. We need to go beyond stuff that should have been passed a decade ago and catch up. It's time for some bold radical change. It's time for, you know, legislation to come out that says we want an end to private prison fucking period. <laughs> If you you can't have a real apology or healing, right? That's that's another thing that Joe Biden likes to talk about is oh, healing the nation. We're we're healing the nation here. You can't have that without acknowledgement and accountability for what you did as part of the problem. What this feels like is I don't know if you've heard people say uh I'm sorry you feel that way. That's kind of what this feels like. It's not a real apology. You need to accept what you did. You are the architect of it. Because if you're not, if he's not going to take acknowledgement for it, if he's not going to take real accountability for it, then this is just revising history. That's all he's doing. He's just revising the history to make himself look like, oh man, I'm this great champion that got rid of the um the with the prison industrial complex or whatever and that's just not true he is the architect of it he designed it thank you so much for checking out this video if you enjoyed this content uh please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook, especially Facebook and YouTube. 
they often uncensor people, uh, un unsubscribe people, and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of uh, of various shows that I uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.